everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really very pretty gift bag. You can keep it shut that way if you wanted to add a little peg on the top. I'm just going to keep mine open, have lots of tissue kind of coming out of the top, and then I can just hold them. But if I just bring it up here, you can see it's all rose gold. So it's using the Dovecraft Happy You collection, along with multiple dies, which I will talk you through in a moment. But it's, it's just a gorgeous, really special, quite elegant looking gift bag. Love the big handles there. And I love all the detail with those dies as well, which I'll show you in a moment. So I've used the Have a Beautiful Day there again. I'll show you that stamp. And this one measures four by seven and a half and height, it is eight inches. So it's a really nice size. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so I'm using a variety of sizes of red tape. This is the new one by Dove um, Trimcraft, sorry, it's the Dot and Dab range. Again, everything will be linked below as normal. There's my handle, so I have gone and done some of them, and I will show you that one in a moment. They're the dies. So that's the rectangle, and they're the ovals that I've used. And you get absolutely tons. And there they are there, I've already just taken the ones that I've used, I've put some tape on them so they're ready for the video. But it's the Card Making Magic by Christina Griffiths. And it's the A5 oval nested set, they're brilliant. They're so, so good, you, well you can see how big they are. And the reason I like these, that like I said in my what did I get, is because they're squashed. So they're really nice for doing sentiments and for handles. You can see there, that's one of the, the ones that we're gonna cut. So, yep, that will all get linked below, but you do get the option to have the rectangles as well. The sentiment for the birthday, beautiful birthday girl, is from this one, which I know many of you have. It's the Craftwork Cards, and it's the A4 stamp set. You get 22, and I've just used this one here. I do use these ones a lot, and I've also used all of these in a couple of other cards as well. So that one I will link. And then the card stock is the Dovecraft Premium Glitter card. This is non-shed, it's beautiful in the rose gold. I've got the rose gold mirrored card stock again, the Dovecraft. I seem to be using all Dovecraft with my papers today, so that's what I've chosen. And then this is the paper. So I've already selected this one here, absolutely stunning foiled one there. And this is the Happy You. And it's again, a beautiful paper pack. In fact, the whole collection that goes with this is gorgeous. So I'll link all of that again for you. And then finally, just to cut those fern pieces, which are really pretty, it's that Bright Rose of Fern Border die. Again, I rave about this one. I've used it quite a lot and um, yeah, love it. So that is all the product. So I'm going to start with the scoring. So you want two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock and really, really straightforward scoring. So along one of the 12 inch sides, you want to score at seven and a half and at 11 and a half, okay? And then rotate it so that what you've scored, that line is at the bottom and score at eight, okay? And do that on both of your pieces. And then for my base, I've got the glitter card stock, which is just, again, absolutely stunning card. This is a piece of nine and a half by six and one eighth. Okay, and along the nine and a half inch side, you want to score at one inch. Okay, then pull the card out slightly. Okay, so don't pull it right up so it lines up with the one eighth of an inch, the first one. You just want it in between this very first piece here. I've actually put a little black marker there just so I've got a little guide. You can also fold some cardstock in half and wedge it up to there, which I've done before. So just pull that one out, and then you want to score at eight and five eighths of an inch. Okay. Also with this scoreboard, I, um, I raved about it in my What Did I Get and I'm loving it, really enjoy using this one. But also they have this little section kind of offset here and that's to help you make the perfect base for your gift boxes. So unless you have this scoreboard, obviously then it's going to be great for you, but I'm not really going to talk about that or use it in this tutorial because not everybody's got this scoreboard. So if you just do what I've done there, then that's you know all you need to do. So again, pop it now along the short side, push it right in and score at one inch. And then again, pull it out just slightly and score at five and one eighth of an inch. So you should now have a one inch border kind of on all four sides there. All right, okay, and then we're gonna do some cutting. So where you would have scored and you'll have this rectangle piece, this square piece, and then these two larger sections, have the smaller parts facing towards you and just very carefully cut down this one here to the first score line and this one here. So just the two score lines running along this top section. And then this one you just want to remove completely. Okay, so that's what we have at the minute. 
Then we just need to tidy up all of our edges. So I'm just going to cut some little wedges off of this tab because that's what we're going to use to connect the two pieces together. And then what's going to happen is this is actually now becoming the top because we're going to die cut the ovals out of this. And I like the thought of having this folded over. But when you bring it up onto its side, you will find it will buckle. Okay, and we need to remove some of that bulk. So if you just open it up and just remove the score line, you will should be able to faintly see it and it will just be a sliver, but it will make a big difference. So whatever the side that you have more of the score line on, just remove it. If you need to take a bit off of each one, that's fine, but just take out that score line. You can see there. And then when you fold it back in, when it lies flat, you should be able to see a white line. It's quite, there we go. But once you fold it up, it completely disappears. It's just removed that bulk so we don't get any of that, um, like I said, buckling. Okay, so you'll now have two pieces that look like that. Pop them to one side and go back to your base. And you just want to fold and burnish all of those score lines. What you're going to do is you're just going to cut out the four squares in the corners. So that one, just go around and do that. Okay. Then what I find it's easier to add your double-sided tape onto these pieces. Now, if you're not using double-sided tape, then you'll want to cut when I show you in a moment. You'll do that and then add your wet glue. But because at the minute they're straight sides, it's really easy for me to just add down my tape because it's easy to just cut each of these. I'm just going to bring in my other scissors here, which I don't mind getting all gunked up. Okay, so just go around and just add if you are using double sided tape onto each of these sides. This stuff is so sticky and it is brilliant for when you're using like glitter card or mirrored card, which is why I'm using it on this one. If I was using a cardstock or a paper that didn't have this foiling on, then I would just say use a, you know, a wet glue or a normal double sided tape. But because I am sticking it against that surface, the red tape's just very, very good because it is super, super sticky and this stuff is just brilliant so that's the reason I'm using it so if you're not using a foiled paper then you can use you know your wet glues and stuff with no problem at all okay so that's all stuck down and now I'm going to go and cut the little kind of angles because if you see on this one here I've actually just come in on an angle now you don't need to but I do think it just I don't know it just makes it look that little bit different so it's easier to put the tape down and then cut, otherwise if you've already cut those shapes then you've got to cut your tape on an angle and it's just it's easy to do it this way. So I'm going to use these. Now I'm going to eyeball it but I came in half an inch on all of these edges. So half an inch there, come in half an inch here, put a little pencil mark. But I'm just going to come in and just by eye cut across that one and then cut up that side. Okay so again come down this one and then cut up that one. So just do that on all of your corners. Okay so that's now what you should have. So once these sides all come up they're going to hold obviously the bag together and you'll just get that little detail on the corners but like I said it is completely optional. So now we need to put the bag together. In fact before we do that we need to cut our handles out. Okay so to cut my handles I'm using two of the, well to cut the frames for the handles you'll use two, to cut the initial handles you just need one of these. Okay, so the size I'm using to actually cut my handle is one, two, three, four, five, the sixth smallest. Okay, and we're going to cut it like this. And then the next size up, you will use both of them together and I used my tape there to hold them together and to cut them in your mirrored card and it will give you this here, okay? So that's how I got my handles but now first of all we're just going to get the handle done. Now because we want to make sure we get them obviously both the same on each piece, if you do one at a time first, you don't want to stick these down yet, you want to do the handle without them stuck because we're going to stick, the, when we stick the bag together we need to put the sides down and then cover that over the top. So it just keeps everything nice and neat, okay? So there is kind of like a bit of a step-by-step -step to make sure we get it all you know, in the right order. So sit this one down within this section here and just make sure you get it equal sides here and kind of equal on the top. So I'm just sitting it in the middle as best as I can and then we'll use this one to line up and trace 
for the next piece there. So I'm just using my purple tape. Now you will need a bigger die machine because it is wider than the six inches on the kind of the smaller ones. So I'm just going to run that through mine now. Okay, so that one's just been run through. Keep these, they're really handy for using on your card making and things. So now we'll have this really nice handle. So if you then get this one, fold that over the same and sit this over the top and just make sure you line it up perfectly and then with a pencil you'll end up cutting this completely away but it's just to give you obviously a guide. You might not be able to see it but I can see my pencil mark and then again I'm going to come in and just line that up so it covers the pencil and I'm just going to run that one through. Okay, so take that one off and again keep these, you'll have two on each. So again, if you want to make matching cards to go with your gift bags, you know, use these pieces here. That'd be perfect. So you will now have, keep those together. So now you can pop your smaller oval into the next size up. Again, make sure you get that nice even frame. Okay, like so. And now with this piece, put it over your mirrored cardstock and run it through four times so that you have these four frames. Okay, you can see mine there. So that's all you need to do for that. Because I've got all that ready, I'm gonna go straight into this piece. So next what we want to do is lift up all of this and we're gonna focus on these pieces here. So again, I'm gonna use my red tape because it is slightly foiled. So I'm just going to run some tape down both of these. Okay, and now we're going to stick them together. So I'm going to take my backing off of this one here. And make sure you get this score line lined up at the top because you can disguise the bottom because it's obviously not attached this piece is separate so we can actually you know hide any mistakes that you may have so just make sure that you get this score line on the top lined up and then stick that down fold it over to make sure it's all nicely lined up and then with this one fold that half and then fold that one over and you should see they marry up nicely so again take the backing off of this one and then I'm just going to I always like to hover it over the top and make sure that I get it lined up like so, it still all folds nice and flat. Okay, like so. And now all these pieces will fold inside, giving you that nice inside. But by doing it that way, it conceals all of those pieces where we stuck the two together. So now I'm just gonna open up each one and I'm just gonna use some of my wet glue. And you don't wanna go really close to the outer side of the oval. So, because obviously I'm using the wet glue, it will just ooze out otherwise. So I'm just going to go around this one and then just fold that one in and stick that all down and just do that on all four sides. So okay, so that's now stuck down and ready for us to pop on the base. So I'm just going to remove one at a time actually, I'm not going to do all of them. You just want to sit this inside this piece here and what I'm going to do is this edge here I want to line up with the score line of my base. Okay so I'm just sitting it in there and you want to make sure you get it perfect. It will sit just right within that space. So just make sure you get it nicely lined up. And then just very carefully bring up the side and just, just tack it. So you can see that I've just tacked it in the middle. And then if you know if you're happy with everything, you can just go along and stick that all down. Pop it on its side and just pop your hand in there. So don't rush this, make sure you do get it all lined up. Then go to the opposite side, take the backing off. Again. Drop it down now. It's just, all you've got to do is make sure you keep it straight because it's in place now. So you just got to make sure that you've yeah you're not you don't want to be wonky like that. You just want to make sure that you line it up dead straight. Again, just tack it up and then pop it on its side and make sure it's all stuck. 
Okay, and then do exactly the same with the two sides. Okay, and there we have the gift bag. So that is now all ready for us to add all that lovely detail. Now, I did bring mine in because this is a paper. I'm able to just push it in and actually squeeze like so. So you can now have it like that. However, you can have it so that it goes out that way as well and it gives you a completely different look. So it's entirely up to you how you want to kind of have it. If you're going to put a lot of stuff in it, then this way would probably work better. But there's quite there's something about that way that I really like. Oh, that I love as well. Okay, so it's entirely up to you until you, I guess you put stuff in it. So for the handles, I've already added my tape to the back of those. So what I've used is a thin double-sided, again, red tape. And you just go along and just kind of bend it around to the shape of what your handle. Don't worry if it all buckles because it's only the top release, um, well it's not paper but everyone calls it like the release paper. Well, I guess when that's when you're using your double sided but just the release plastic and um, yeah don't worry your, your tape is sticking. I just push it down with my left hand and I'm just pulling it around there with my right hand. And this is the just slightly short, um, small, smaller quarter inch one. So again, it works perfectly with this handle. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the backing off of that one. And just very carefully, do the outer ones first. And then, well, you can do either actually, but you wanna work on, actually I'm not making any sense, just stick it on. <laughs> and then if you're slightly out, you can, cover it with the one that you're sticking on the other side. That's what I was trying to say. So I'm just following, because it's exactly the same, the inside of this is exactly the same size as the hole that we've obviously already cut. And it will just give you a really nice detail and finish to your handles. There we go. All right, now I guess you could do your handles before you stick the base but they have to be the last thing you do once you've stuck this kind of shell together. But if you might find it a bit easier to be able to kind of keep it flat, I guess. But it's, yeah, it's entirely up to you, so. And then I'm gonna go in here. Yeah, I think some of you might find it better to do it when it's um, still flat and not all put together, but make sure it's glued down. So when you glued it, then add your, um, your handles. But it's easy to line up. Once you get one of the ends, the rest just falls into place because it's exactly the same size. So you can see now just how lovely. And they really do add something to the final look. So all this little detail that I love doing. So I'm just going to stick this one down. Okay, so that's now all done. So decide if you've got a preference to a front and back. I think I'm going to have that is my front and then you just want to decorate I quite liked the thought of just having my decoration towards the bottom I think obviously the handles there so but I like the thought of having it kind of offset to one side but you could have something here kind of with flowers and vines and stuff all kind of dangling down you could add a gift tag with some ribbon around the top the thinnest part here there's lots and lots of ways to decorate it and that's what I always like to see when you share them over on Mix Up Crafters on Facebook because yeah it's so nice to see other people's you know ideas and uh, ways to decorate but I've gone and just die cut a variety of the ferns in the glitter and in the rose and then I'm just kind of layering them over each other something like that and then I've got how many did I add there actually so it was three and then I done all the little smaller ones so pull that one apart and have it a little bit smaller that one I must have already prepared, so that one can go there, and then I finish it with the rose, the, yeah, the rose gold there. So that's how they're all going to be stuck, and then everything gets covered because I'm using my hot glue with that over the top. I just think it's so really quite simple, but because we're working with the mirrored and the glitter cardstock, it just really does just turn things, you know, into something really special. So my heat gun is now nice and hot, so I'm going to get all that stuck down.
Okay, so there it is, all finished. It's gorgeous. I'm not sure which one's my favourite. I love them equally, I think. Gorgeous. These would be great for a nice heavy candle inside as well. A couple of candles, actually. But yeah, just a really nice different style to use. I love creating different looks. I like that you can have that, push them in like that, you can have that that way. Or like I said, you can have it, if you pull them out here, like so. And you could tie it with some ribbon at the top there. Oh, don't catch my fern. But yeah, there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? See what I mean? Just completely transforms it. So yeah, I hope you like it. I hope you give them a go. They are pretty easy to make. Just make sure you follow those steps and in that order. And uh, yeah, you should have these lovely, beautiful bags. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.